today. Circle's valuation doubles as part of a new SPAC deal. We talked to the company's CEO. JP Morgan warns that Fed rate hikes could cause massive losses for the crypto market. That same investment bank launches a lounge in the metaverse. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Tanea McKeel. The crypto market is in the red again today, falling about 2.8% by noon Eastern. Impending Fed rate hikes and inflation risks continue to weigh on cryptocurrencies across the board. Bitcoin slipped below $42,000, falling a little less than 4% in the past 24 hours. Ether dipped below $3,000 and fell about 3%. Meanwhile, Ripple's XRP lost about 2% since yesterday. Today is the deadline for Ripple to release documents that could have major implications in its legal battle with the SEC. Okay, those are the price moves, but let's also talk about some of the headlines. First, the DOJ just named its first director of cryptocurrency enforcement. Yoon Young Choi will lead the national cryptocurrency enforcement team's efforts to crack down on illicit transactions and hacks. The NCET was created in October of 2021 and has more than a dozen prosecutors. Most notably, it's involved in the prosecution of the New York couple arrested in connection with four and a half billion dollars worth of stolen Bitcoin. Next, the largest bank in the US is getting in on the metaverse. JP Morgan just opened the Onyx Lounge in Decentraland. It's part of the bank's growing blockchain and metaverse efforts. And it coincides with new research from JP Morgan advising businesses on how to take advantage of the $54 billion in digital transactions annually. It also represents a strong contradiction from some of the comments that CEO Jamie Dimon has made in the past, like calling Bitcoin fool's gold. The investment bank also released a note calling crypto fairy dusk at risk of massive losses in the wake of higher interest rates. Circle, the payments company behind the popular USDC stablecoin, just updated its deal to go public. The new SPAC deal with Concord Acquisition Corp doubles Circle's valuation to $9 billion, and the updated deal comes as stablecoins face renewed scrutiny among federal lawmakers. Our own Kate Rooney sat down with the company's CEO to get more context on the deal and what it means for the stablecoin industry. Of course, so double the valuation uh, talks about growth of USD coin. So that's the stable coin issued by Circle. Walk us through why the company is now worth twice as much as it was when you signed this deal just last summer. Well, what, what we've seen really over the last year has been tremendous momentum for USDC. Uh, and, and, and that's really across a lot of different metrics. Um, you know, we, we look at USDC as, as a kind of platform business. It's a, it's a capability that the entire ecosystem can build on top of, whether you're building a protocol, a digital wallet, a financial service, a Web3 app. And we've just seen adoption all around the world for people building it. And alongside that, uh, we've seen this tremendous growth in the amount of USDC in circulation. And so, you know, from, you know, early uh, in, in 2021, uh, we've seen it, you know, grow added about 45 billion in circulation, and even just since the start of this year, we entered the year with 42 billion USDC in circulation. We're approaching 53 billion in circulation today. That growth has really been tremendous, and so alongside that growth um, is growth in our financial outlook, uh, the monetization that we see in USDC and and the other services that we build around it. And so 45 billion dollars is a big number. Can you walk us through how that? adds to to circles bottom line and how you guys make money off of uh usdc and the stable coin set up there how does that affect circle yeah so um we we really have a couple of kind of core businesses we run what we call our stable coin market infrastructure and again I, as a, i'm an internet technology guy by background um and we look at this as sort of a protocol an open infrastructure that developers and, and other uh, other builders can can take advantage of and build on top of. And so, you know, really, that's just making sure that that's a, a market infrastructure that's easy to adopt. And as that grows, we monetize through the reserves. And so as as we've seen the, you know, the interest rate outlook increase, and we've seen the dramatic growth in USDC and circulation, uh, that creates a very, very significant income stream. We also then, uh, you know, over the past two years have built out additional products around USDC, transaction services, treasury services, a crypto lending product. And these are also growing uh, and, and these kind of additional services that companies can use. Circle is also looking to get a national bank charter. Give us an update on that process. Why go that route? So 
uh, last uh, late summer, early fall, we announced our intention to file for a national bank charter. And very specifically, um, what, what we are interested in being is a, uh, a full reserve digital currency bank. Uh, and I think what's important to note is that's a novel charter. Um, and in fact, you see today in the discussions around you know, the Treasury Department looking for kind of new supervisory frameworks for stablecoin issuers such as Circle, um, really you're, you're seeing Congress and, and Treasury discussing how does, what is the specific form of charter? What are the specific kind of rules around someone who's holding a full reserve dollar digital currency? W what I can say is that um, we've had very constructive engagement with national bank regulators. And I think, um, you know, as, as I like to say, there's no uh, OCC exam manual for a stablecoin issuer, but there's going to be, and we got to work through that. Uh, we did get some minutes or the minutes from the January Fed meeting yesterday. Some of the members did seem concerned, concerned about crypto. There was a line um, about emerging risks to financial stability, rapid growth of crypto assets and DeFi platforms. Do they have a point there? Are you worried about any of those same risks? I mean, look, it's, it's obviously it's a $2 trillion asset class. You're seeing payment systems being built up, digital currency payment systems being built up that are doing trillions of dollars in transactions and, and, and growing. And, and, um, and, and so I think you know, my view has always been that this technology is a new economic infrastructure. It's an, a new internet native economic infrastructure that the world is gonna get built up around. Our financial system, our economic system, the way corporations function, the way commerce functions, all these things are gonna get rebuilt on the public internet, on this infrastructure. And so, yes, it is. It's going to be a really significant infrastructure. And I think it's appropriate to be thinking about it in those ways. Um, and that's why I think it's important for policymakers to, to be, you know, kind of thinking about, you know, what is needed uh, to ensure that, you know, the tail risks are addressed, that, you know, good actors are, are doing what they need to do. Yeah, well, speaking of the Federal Reserve, which you mentioned earlier, they finally put out that white paper on central bank digital currencies in January. Uh, they talked a lot about CBDCs and what, what it would mean to traditional finance, to banks, and to some of the privately issued stablecoins like USDC. Would that upend any demand for some of the private stablecoins like the one that Circle issues? Yeah, so I think if you look at the history of electronic money innovation in the United States and, and largely in most advanced uh, developed markets in the West um, over the past 75 years, um, it has been uh, driven by private sector innovation, um, you know, and, and driven by, you know, standards that are built that allow for, you know, the private sector to kind of build networks and interoperability, whether that be our wire messaging systems, our credit card networks, our debit card networks, ATMs, uh, Apple Pay, PayPal, you know, all, all of these innovations have, have been really driven out of the private sector underneath they are supported by the safety and soundness of the Federal Reserve, of the monetary policy of the United States. Uh, and, and I think what we're seeing today with digital you know, currency and, and dollar digital currencies like USDC is just a continuation of that, of that trend. Now, I think you know, from a, from ultimately um, the, the pace of innovation that's going to happen there is going to far outstrip any government-sponsored R&D project. And so one of the risks, of course, is uh, you know, a, a government sponsored R&D project that may take three years or five years, uh, et cetera, may already be obsolete technologically. And so um, our view is that, you know, private sector standards, open Internet standards are going to reach a critical mass in particular over the next two to three years. And that's going to need to be part of the Federal Reserve System. It's going to need to be part of the international monetary system. And ultimately, if there are upgrades, if you will, to the core architecture of the dollar, as I like to say, you know, the dollar is, uh, is an Oracle database running on some mini computers. Uh, if, the, if the core architecture of the dollar were, was updated into, you know, cryptographic keys, uh, you know, that's great. That could be an improvement. But I don't think that that's going to change uh, the, the, the kind of innovation for how people on a day-to-day -day basis are using digital currency. Before we go, we want to remind you that you can find the full interview with Jeremy Allaire at CNBC.com slash Crypto World. And with that, you're all caught up for today, but we'll be back again tomorrow with more. We'll see you then.